so good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i'm glad to start this online seminar on healthcare reform experience in poland uh, this is a part of our program supported by the international visegrad fund advancing reforms in armenia with visegrad falls know-how and i'm glad to welcome our today's presenter dr michal zabdriamros from the health and health policy and management department institute of public health Jagiellonian university medical college yes please the floor is yours thank you very much thank you for uh, for for this opportunity uh very glad to uh to, to be here and uh today i will present uh, the uh the uh, the, the, the experience of Poland in, in uh, uh, healthcare reform uh, uh, across uh, across uh, almost uh, 30 uh, years and more. Uh, and uh, my uh, my approach here will be uh, let me start from this uh, sharing the screen with you now. Uh, can you see the presentation? Can you see it? Excellent. Yes. So, uh, uh, so uh, I will I will speak about uh, our uh, healthcare system uh, in a way that is uh, that is what we try to, to uh, cover as much as possible. But uh, to tell you the truth, uh, the healthcare system in Poland is quite complicated. Um, uh, to show this, uh, I'll start with the uh, introduction. The Republic of Poland uh, is a country that is uh, in uh, Europe, like, uh, like from, uh, from uh, Germany. We have around 30 million people, and one of our challenges uh, uh, currently is actually the uh, decreasing population and by sharply increasing population. Uh, uh, and this is part of the challenges also uh, uh, facing our healthcare system. And I would like to present, if I want to present you the whole healthcare system, I would have to leave you with this map of healthcare system. Uh, I, I, I created this for, for some of the publications we present. This is a, I call it a map of healthcare system. And of course, uh, uh, you can already see it, it is quite confusing, uh, quite uh, messy, uh, a lot of things going on there. A lot of institutions and a lot of interrelation. Uh, um, so uh, uh, I will not, I will provide you with this map uh, in the end. However, what I should do actually to, to explain to you how this came to be, uh, how did this happen, and, uh, and why certain institutions exist after that. Because um, uh, I can tell you that uh, Polish uh, Poland is. Uh, in general, from the healthcare system, in general, based uh, or inspired by the Bismarck model. Uh, as a historically a go to model uh, in our history for the Polish healthcare system, uh, as you can see, this is a, a, a fitness fund from the city of Smuch uh, from, the, from the internet period. Uh, so we, we, we were inspired by German experiences uh, a lot. And we, uh, after the communist times, we went. Uh, back to uh, India. Um, but as you all know, as all uh, health uh, system scholars know, uh, all those uh, traditional uh, healthcare system models like Bismarck, Beverage, or the US individual model are currently uh, do not currently do not exist in their full form uh, since all those two systems undergo uh, convergence and, uh, and uh, developing a lot of similarities. So, uh, in a way, also, the Polish healthcare system cannot be called as a Bismarck model, although it is inspired by it. And, and how the history went uh, is relevant here, uh, because, uh, to paraphrase the famous quote from Nietzsche, I believe, uh, in, in, health, in case of healthcare systems, they do not have essence, they, they do not adhere to models, but they have their own history, their own challenges. They develop. Uh, they, they might look nicely and uh, and in systematic 
history, but they actually developed in an incremental way. Uh, a, a lot like uh, like uh, the project of me, you might say. Uh, they might be a blueprint, they might be a plan uh, somewhere, but they are developed uh, in stages. Things are built upon uh, the existing structures. Some structures fall down, some structures are insufficient, something must, must be added to the site. So that's how it also happens in Poland. Uh, the starting point for us is the Shemashko model uh, before 1989. Um, uh, I will not dwell into this, because I mean, are familiar with this uh, uh, model uh, as, as, as sharing, as you shared the experience of the, the communist the participation in the communist bloc. But uh, in, uh, from these times and earlier times, actually, we, we inherit certain very important institutions. Uh, uh, one of the most important institutions here would be the National Institute of Public Health, also known as the National Institute of Hygiene, a historic name and actually retained. This is an institution created in 1918 when we gained independence uh, uh, after the partition of the World War One. This is currently still existing, a research state institute under the Ministry of Health, very relevant as a source of expertise for public health care system. Uh, unfortunately, uh, underappreciated institutions. Uh, we hope not so much after the pandemic. Also, another relevant institution is the state sanitary inspection, but also it's, uh, it's a sort of a health, uh, public health police uh, under the Ministry of Health. Um, and it also derives from the experiences of the National Institute of Health. And currently, it, it exists uh, uh, under the law of 1985, actually. So Still retain the element that we created in the communist time, in the uh, communist period, but of course with various amendments over time. Uh, and uh, our main experience here would be the fall of the Polish People's Republic, the fall of the communist uh, regime. Uh, as you can see, we, we shifted from the from the evil without uh, a crown to the evil with a crown, but that didn't change the, the republican character of the system. Uh, just a traditional sort of thing. Uh, and to understand the experiences of the 90s when we were developing our healthcare system, it, uh, it might be helpful to see this uh, a screenshot, screen grab from the uh, from the one of the first commercial uh, advertisements in Polish television. Uh, and this is a logo of the, the company distributing a product as another pesticide. And you can see this is a a uh, typical, very typical name of Polish uh, company at the time in the early 90s. Uh, the gra grand hall and the bold letters, the, the, the letters are painted with American flag. So it shows you what, what the ideological inclinations were at the time, the capitalism, democracy, and so on. But we still retain this kind of a legacy of communism, as you can see uh, at the bottom, uh, the, the uh, the company was located at the avenue of the October Revolution. Uh, and probably remained uh, after the design, but uh, but uh, the, 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 the legacy remains. But the most important thing for us is the drive for capitalism and democracy, decentralization, individualism, and so on. And, so forth. Uh, and these are the 90s. Uh, we we introduced the, the self of governance in, in, in the municipalities in the 1990s. Uh, we also connected with the Action Healthcare Unit, which, which enabled uh, municipalities and local governments to, to have their own uh, uh, healthcare providers. Uh, in the 90s, we had a pilot program for, for producing other labs here of self government counties. And in 1999, we introduced four grand reforms, education reform, retirement, pension reform, and public administration reform, and healthcare. And the latter two are, uh, uh, are the, the most important for us here because they are interconnected. So this is the start of uh, the key moment, uh, founding moment for us. And here we chose to go the Bismarck way. Uh, but let me start uh, uh, first, from the uh, public administration, it might be relevant uh, uh, to understand what the, 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 the administrative system in Poland, to grasp the, 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 
impact of certain reforms. So Poland is a unitary state with, uh, with uh, a decent amount of decentralization, uh, uh, but no regional autonomy. Uh, what we did in the uh, in 1990s, uh, as you can see, we have uh, the classical parliamentary uh, democracy, parliamentary government system. Uh, uh, we have the, uh, the the public administration going deep down on on being deconcentrated on local and um, regional and local levels. As you can see, we have a central uh, agency and service inspection. That does their representatives on the on the regional level. The region is called Voivodeship in Poland, and we have a very similar thing on the county level, but uh, not all of the public administration, central administration goes uh, that deep. Uh, we have Voyevod, who is the representative of the, uh, of the governmental central administration, and we have uh, self government. As you can see, they are kind of a parallel. At the same level, we can have a, like a, a Voyevodship, uh, let's say, sanitary state inspection, for instance, but also uh, we have self government, Voyevodship self government. Uh, and this is well, not going to dive into it, but you can see we have three tiers of self government. And municipality, county, and voivodeship, uh, and these uh, are supposedly uh, not uh, connected. In, uh, in, uh, what I mean by that is that their competencies should be uh, exclusive. They should have their own competencies, and you should, uh, uh, they're not related in any way. For instance, it's not so something like a municipality can be delegated to county. There are separate elections for these uh, institutions and so on. So there it is. Um, uh, one important thing is uh, it's historically something uh, of a novelty in Poland. The voivodeship, uh, the region, was introduced uh, as a new tier of self government, not really well known in Poland aside from the uh, area experience of the to some extent. So, so many historical names there. So basically, what we did, we, we introduced voivodeship self government, and we, copying the smart model, Attached uh, regional uh, stiffness funds to the regional self government. And the thing is that uh, we couldn't create the copy of the smart model in a way that we really constructed because of certain quirks in, in the constitution. But what we actually have to do, we have to connect the uh, uh, healthcare uh, uh, insurance institution to, uh, to some public authority uh, and we decided to go along with. Attaching to regional government that fulfills the idea of decentralization. And how it works, that we, that's how we introduced this was in this smart model in 1999. We have 16 fiction funds uh, along with 16 fiction voyagership. And the, uh, the very early problem that we observed there is that, uh, uh, that the uh, regional fitness funds had problems with. Uh, well, with, with the solidarity between each other, the, uh, the, the public uh, healthcare system is supposed to be based on the principle of solidarity between the, the rich and the poor, between the, the healthy and the, and the, and the unhealthy. Uh, that also means solidarity between regions, between people living in different regions. And this kind of a uh, decentralization led to the problem of some uh, health system funds had more money. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and usually when when a, when a region is more wealthy, it also has better health conditions. So it meant that uh, regions with uh, poorer economic conditions were actually in a more dire health situation, uh, meaning that they had even less money to spend on healthcare. So this became a challenge, and this this uh, this meant that the, the constitutional principles of solidarity were not inequity in resource distribution uh, for services. Um, so what we did is uh, we actually in 2003-2004, this is kind of a messy process, but it happened, we introduced the National Health Fund. What happened is that we introduced the Central National Health Fund uh, under the Ministry of Health uh, with dele the deconcentrated branches of regional sickness fund. So we basically took away uh, Kranken we took away the uh, sickness funds, 
turn them into branches of central, uh, into the branches of central, central agency. Uh, in order to, uh, to do something very similar that happened actually a few years later in Germany themselves, uh, when they also, uh, while reducing the, the competition and between business uh, funds, they observed that there was a problem uh, with the issue of solidarity between uh, the teams of, uh, of the insured persons. So, what we actually did is we kind of uh, decoupled two functions within the payer function. We decoupled the allocation function, which we retained at the uh, regional level. So it's kind of it's more effective, more efficient uh, to, to do the allocation at the uh, level closest to the front line. But uh, uh, the distribution is very ineffective at the central level. So we centralize the distribution because at this level we can we can uh, actually perform the, the, the core function of the system. So there is uh, health assistance. So in in ways we uh, we actually went along with the same. Uh, going on in Europe uh, to a little bit earlier, uh, the Netherlands, is, uh, something similar, kind of a creating a different type of a centralized uh, uh, risk compensation fund uh, at the central level. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's what happened. Uh, and since then, we have the National Health Fund, uh, NSZ, Narodowy Fundus Zdrowia, which is very Party logo. Um, and, and just uh, to kind of explain to you what actually is going on right now in the system, I will use uh, the backdrop of this uh, psychology but introduced by OACD. Quite all the psychology that's kind of useful. We, of course, have a, a prevalent uh, 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 model of direct payment rotation. And, and most certainly you can go to the private, uh, private healthcare provider, and it's actually dominating part of the the uh, dentistry, uh, for instance, typical to the, to the private dentistry uh, uh, waiting times and things like that. Um, but of course, we have the uh, the mandatory insurance with contracts between payer and provider, and this backdrop of this triangle model. So we have. Uh, uh, can you see the the uh, uh, So you have here the uh, the payer. Institution that makes a uh, contract with provider, uh, beneficiaries pay contributions, and when they go to the provider, they are uh, upgraded to help them uh, deliver to them uh, without uh, payment. Um, basically, uh, we, we have this idea that they are clear from uh, co payment, but of course, it's uh, something uh, here and there we use to go out uh, under the cost. So, but basically, uh, we have contracts between payer and provider, and this is relevant. But uh, I uh, emphasize it later. There is a uh, there is a legal rule that ban that does not allow payers or national health funds to have their own health care provider. This is what is used to for the, for the purpose of uh, the internal market or competition. Uh, that's the period. Uh, this was relevant at the period to create the competition. Uh, but we also have the cost uh, reimbursement mechanism, and it's actually uh, 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 present in the public institutions uh, within the first order. You can go abroad, for instance, you can uh, go to the healthcare provider abroad. You can see there is a, a, a internal a European market, the European market, the, the our health uh, payer. National Health Fund will be obliged to, uh, under certain conditions, to uh, reimburse these kind of uh, services. However, there are many uh, reservations there. I will not drive into it. If you'd like, I can expand on this. It's an interesting process, procedure. There are limitations and, 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 uh, and sort of, sort of a, uh, backstops uh, and, uh, uh, so that to, to contain those, those expenses. Our national fund is underfunded. So, uh, and also we have uh, quite uh, present, prevalent uh, to a certain extent, the, the, integra the integrated system uh, within the voluntary insurance. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, private healthcare companies, uh, such as the Brooks, are 
very uh, present on the market uh, in such a way, usually via employers like large corporations are providing benefits to patients. That, also, that usually covers uh, uh, primary health care and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the, some special care. Uh, uh, yeah, basically that's it. Uh, and uh, to sum it up, I'm just going to show you how the system works in Poland, basically the public system. We have national health funds, we have provided benefits, that's the basic model. Uh, uh, then we have Minister of Health uh, uh, as the supervising entity. And the national health fund is divided into central and, and regional branches. The contracting is being arranged on the level of regional branches. Uh, uh, the the payment, uh, the, the uh, healthcare contributions go through the uh, state uh, uh, state um, pension, state social insurance system, uh, but they are actually a dedicated per payroll tax. Uh, uh, they are called contributions, but they are actually dedicated per payroll tax. Uh, we have some problems. Since this is a Bismarck model uh, and the uh, entitlement is uh, by uh, system by, by the system, by the law, and based on certain categories of people included in the uh, insurance scheme, uh, uh, and the entitlement is derived from being insured, and we have some problems with universal coverage. But uh, there are reforms going on to, to ameliorate this problem. Uh, also, since it's taken by covering those people. Are uninsured just by people uh, uh, without even uh, too much or asking about uh, the case of uh, insurance to a certain extent. So that's the direction right now of some reforms. Uh, we have, uh, as mentioned, the contract between regional health branches and, uh, and national health branches and providers. These are interestingly uh, civil contract law, and it means that there are. Uh, Private healthcare providers who can also participate in the system are, are uh, to a large extent free to refuse from these contracts. There is supposedly some kind of uh, negotiation going on, but the truth is, of the matter is that National Health Fund is a dominant structure there, it's a monopolistic, monopolistic power. Uh, and uh, yes, and those providers can be public, can be private, uh, uh, can be founded. Created by regional self government, like uh, municipalities, counties, and boys of uh, self government. They can be created by the Minister of Health uh, and often are, such as the larger hospitals. But interestingly, the National Health Fund cannot create their own. Uh, so this introduces kind of a, uh, a contracting of services, and this is the emphasis, this is an emphasis on the interpretation of internal market. Uh, but it has its own problems and problems because of the increased costs uh, as we see, for instance. Uh, like a refusal to, uh, and the National Health Fund can refuse to uh, cover uh, additional expenses that the uh, hospital made, for instance. Uh, and, uh, uh, and yes, and there's a problem they have to go to court to get the money back. So there's, a, there's that. There's that. Uh, uh, the, I want to explain this diagram, but just to, for reference, uh, we what we did actually we introduced the gatekeeper system for our basic cost containment mechanism is gatekeeper, so we were, we were supposed to go through uh, primary health care generally uh, practitioners uh, can do it, providing with the federal. But then there's a, there are exceptions you can go like directly to uh, to dentists, so that's not it's not universal in such a way. Uh, so, uh, so what what are the problems, challenges, reform, further reforms that might be uh, interesting uh, in our experience? Uh, this is a this is a, 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 a photo of one of the uh, uh, advertisements in the press for National Health Fund. Uh, some of you might know the Polish might notice that there is a there is a misspelling of the name of the institution. It actually says not National Health Fund but National Fund of Doom, uh, and to some extent, uh, some people say that uh, uh, that's a symbolic to, 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 to some, uh, uh, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is that we do have problems with the uh, public healthcare system, and uh, and when it comes to thinking about changes in the system and reforms, 
uh, I think, no, the, 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 the first thing that happened when the 2014 reform was introduced, is that it was became clear to the healthcare providers, private healthcare providers, by 2003, uh, most of uh, 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 primary healthcare providers were private entities. Uh, so um, they, at this point, they realized that there's a problem, there's an issue with the too strong power of, uh, of the National Health Fund. The National Health Fund under the uh, Minister of Health could impose any conditions of per contact within the form, for instance. So it meant that uh, when the new reforms are coming, the new uh, conditions for contracts are coming in, and uh, and these conditions might be very unfavorable. For instance, new apps uh, without additional payment. For them. Uh, so this part immediately this part of the creation of the something that we call for the regional district and the green uh, green mountain uh, association. This is an association of healthcare providers, and they are. Actually, employers, they are not uh, individual doctors, but they are like uh, larger employers, uh, uh, larger entities. Uh, and this is mainly to, uh, to, to counteract the monopsonic, uh, the single consumer in the market, to con counteract the, the monopsonic power of the National Health Fund. Uh, so, so, what they all usually organize when there were a reform that was uh, kind of problematic on the part of uh, primary health care providers. What they did, they scrapped. They, they arranged together. They, they refused to sign the new contract, which was in, uh, in order to force the ministry, the national health and ministry, to change those conditions uh, to make them more favorable. So this is that that's what happened uh, within the internal market. Kind of a, a, a like a, a association of employers, uh, employer. Uh, another uh, uh, relevant uh, problem challenge that we had in Poland was that our uh, guaranteed benefit basket, the basket, the baskets were actually lacking in quality. I mean, they're, they're not. There's, there's a problem with evidence-based uh, medicine there, uh, and uh, and even more, the problem was uh, that they were uh, merely uh, internal uh, national health fund ordinance. So they could not be treated for by citizens as a source of entitlement. They could not go to court and say that you are supposed to provide me with this. Um, so that was the, the problem. So what we did in order to tackle this, uh, we uh, established, first we established the Agency for Health Technology Assessment and Talent. Actually, originally it was only uh, Agency for Technology Assessment, which was in 2006. But in 2009, there was a major reform uh, when the, this agency uh, uh, established itself better. Then they, uh, the, 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 by the Act of Parliament, uh, the agency became uh, rooted in the law and uh, provided the power of advising the Minister of Health in uh, establishing guaranteed benefit baskets as, uh, as executive regulation. Meaning that they can be uh, treated as a source of entitlement. And also in 2016, uh, there's another challenge we have. We actually observed that there's a problem with pricing of services. Some services were overpriced and the other underpriced. And we uh, a traditional Polish uh, problem uh, was that the invasive uh, cardiology was uh, very well priced. And uh, all healthcare providers wanted to. Have this service in order to uh, to, uh, to uh, reap the rewards of, of using this with a so forth. So this this, this meant that uh, not only that we spent too much on this, but it also provoked the spike in, uh, in these type of services, uh, like invasive like operate heart operation surgery, where other types of treatments could be possibly cheaper and more uh, cost effective. So this uh, this what happened also in around 2016, this agency was also given the uh, competences in uh, pricing of services. Uh, that meant to, to, to make this evidence-based pricing of services. Uh, another uh, input for reform. There was an issue with public health care providers in uh, In 2011, 
we uh, reform our uh, systematization, legal systematization of healthcare providers. Uh, I'm not sure uh, I will, I can briefly explain for now what's going on here. So basically we distinguish healthcare providers in, uh, uh, in two types, uh, therapeutic entities, which are legal persons like corporations, things like that, and professional practices. Professional practices are individual new practices. You can see the legal forms of them. Uh, uh, it, it, as you can see, we did a, a little bit of research to connect it with, uh, with all the regulations. You can see what type of uh, legal forms they can take. Um, so these therapeutic entities uh, are distinguished between non business entities and business entities. And also, uh, by default, there's kind of other non profit. Uh, uh, let's start from this. All the non profits we have British institutes, foundations, associations, or religious uh, churches or religious organizations, religious organizations in uh, in, uh, in the aspects of the activities that, that where they are performing their political activity. Non business entities are basically public uh, institutions. The budgetary units within the, for instance, local government, military facility, also uh, later on will add it as this type. But, but the most relevant institution here was the public independent healthcare institution. This is a, something that we introduced in the 90s. And was, the idea there was, uh, and this institution still exists in this new systematization. There's no, this is the most prevalent public form, form of public uh, healthcare provider. And so what, what, what happened here is uh, what we basically wanted to create is the arm's length body uh, healthcare provider, basically. Uh, helping uh, ideas from the West, from the United Kingdom, for instance, in, in which we create an entity that is self-governing, uh, even detached from the from the founding uh, entity. Uh, uh, and this, there was a problem with uh, these institutions falling into debt, uh, with financial liability. Uh, and what what actually happened uh, is that uh, the government at the time tried to force these. Uh, uh, institutions to be transformed into uh, uh, capital companies, venture partnership or limited liability companies, business entities. Even though they were supposed to be owned by the public entity, by uh, the government, for instance, and even though they were supposed to perform public functions. So there was a problem. Can they really be fully a business entity? How, what would happen if, if somebody if, uh, is expecting to have profit from it. So that was a challenge, but the current government actually uh, retracted all those uh, the obligations mandates to transform these entities, and we have the structure like this. Uh, uh, so uh, we have business entities, capital companies, and Canada, Canada and the Pacific uh, uh, limited joint stock partners with Canada mixed institutions. So basically that's, that's how we have this today. Um, Another impulse for reform uh, is uh, uh, we had problem with actually uh, covering the needs, health needs of the population. The contracting of services was not based on needs but on available resources. And to a certain extent, it still is, I'm talking. Meaning, uh, what needs of that? Where the hospital? Where the available healthcare provider for that type of treatment? Um, uh, so, uh, what we actually introduced in 2015 is the health need map. Uh, again, this is a kind of a diagram. I will provide you those diagrams later on, but as you can see, there are uh, maps of health needs on a central level and a regional level. And uh, first of all, interestingly, first of all, uh, what is created in the for, for collaboration between various institutions, including national health funds, including federal government, but also primarily. Uh, as a task uh, given to uh, to the National Institute of Public Health, uh, is to create the health, regional health needs map. And when they are approved by the voivod, the regional governor, uh, then uh, afterwards, then the minister creates uh, 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 oh, oh, sorry, they're they're a kind of a proposed to the minister by the voivod, and then the minister. Of Public and after regional maps are created, then the country maps are created, uh, also by the national. So uh, that's how we wanted to tackle this problem. 
Uh, another problem was the, uh, was the problem with the uh, allocation of resources when it comes to phosphorus uh, injection. This means phosphorus. So, as you can see, there's a separation between how the uh, equipment, medical equipment, is being uh, like phosphorus is being funded and used by local government, for instance, and how it services uh, uh, contracted. So, there's a, there's a detachment between these two functions. What it means is that some local communities, some local governments think uh, that they want to expand their hospital, their local hospital. Uh, they purchase some new equipment, they, uh, they build a new ward. Uh, and what happened is that, uh, oh there, now uh, now they want money from the National Health Fund, uh, which means that they are spreading more thinly the, 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 the available funds, because the, the thinking of the local community is that local government that we will support the jobs in our local community we will attract jobs we will attract uh, doctors and so on uh, but it, it, there's a lack of thinking globally about what is the distribution of resources where, where, are need, where actually those, where those uh, services needed more than in this case so what they actually introduced is so-called Yobish, the, the, the instrument, the evaluation instrument for uh, investment motion in healthcare. And that's a tool by Minister of Health uh, to kind of evaluate whether this uh, uh, this investment is going to be supported uh, financially. Uh, so in summary, uh, what I would say is that uh, we have here uh, the uh, we have here the uh, our healthcare our uh, administrative system. Uh, you can see now that uh, there is uh, national health fund is located somewhere around here by agency and fund. There's a central agency. There's a directorate branches, and then we have state sanitary uh, inspection. You can see being here. There are three tiers. Of uh, health technology and pricing is located here within the Department of Health uh, as a central agency for health technology and pricing allocation. We have pharmaceutical inspection also working, but it's not going as so detail or like the delegated on the very basic level. Uh, we have medical rescue, health needs, planning and supervision, uh, managed and supervised by the boy. Interestingly, uh, medical rescue is uh, is operated by uh, in, a, in a separate way, with an exception to the, to the rest of the system works, in such a way that the, the voyevod is disposing, uh, it, it, it is not funded from contribution uh, or prerogative, because the incitement to be rescued is uh, uh, by being there uh, in a need, uh, so it would be uh, served to uh, require the proof of insurance. And also, the separate, that, means, that means that there is a separate uh, financial goal there. So, here the, the Royal Road is taking money from the central government and it's using this money to set up the rescue system. But interestingly, it uses the help of the National Health Fund because still there is the issue of contracting service. So, the money from the Royal Road goes to the National Health Fund and the National Health Fund uses the money to contract for emergency uh, medical rescue. There's an exception to the exception in that <clears throat> in that uh, 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 helicopter rescue is being contacted by minister uh, uh, minister uh, under ministry of defense. So uh, okay, so uh, there we also have uh, uh, there we also have uh, another um, uh, the, the national health programs are being uh, created. On the central level, and interestingly, that is uh, that is relevant and is a good, I would say, uh, progress uh, in, the, in the issue of coordinating activities and in, in the forward uh, health in all policy approach, uh, meaning that uh, national health programs are being established as the executive regulations by the whole Council of Ministers, meaning that all the ministers, all ministers, all departments have to cooperate in realizing this, not only in the health. Furthermore, we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, health promotion and social assistance made by C 
uh, local so by self government. Uh, on the regional level, we have regional health programs, uh, and we have, for instance, promotion, health promotion for seniors at the municipality level. Uh, we also have the ownership of hospitals by the minister, uh, but also by medical colleges, and uh, of course uh, uh, by ter territorial local government within their duty and tasks of securing access to that type of uh, Also on the Voivodeship level, we have occupational health centers. Uh, the Voivodeship shall go in all those centers. And uh, if you'd like a brief uh, rundown of how the uh, very relevant um, uh, university hospital work uh, here. So you can see Minister of Health is actually a, a founding and supervisory entity and subsidizing entity public medical colleges. And these medical colleges uh, create their own clinics, uh, clinical hospitals. And these clinical hospitals are uh, financed by uh, from the central government, uh, via national fund or directly. So uh, that's how it goes there. And I should add here uh, that uh, what I mentioned here is uh, not all the challenges. I, I wanted to provide you with a, a brief rundown of what's going on, uh, like main structural reforms uh, uh, and directions of reforms. Uh, but the basic challenge that we are still facing uh, is uh, chronic underfunding of healthcare, and this is the impact of recently by, by our current government. Uh, there are plans to increase funding by increasing or changing, modifying uh, the way that health contributions are, are calculated for the uh, higher earners and for the people self-employed. Um, this means we also have a, due to underfunding, due to the, the whole the issue of um, market pressures and decentralization, too much, a lot of degree of decentralization actually totally. And due to this kind of a setup of the internal market, sort of competition, uh, we have a, primarily, of course, these chronic underfunding. We have a, a huge problem with excess of lean management. So, so this, uh, for instance, showed up in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the pandemic when we, it turns out that we have, uh, so we, we base our system on many hospitals function on the on time delivery model. Uh, they, they do not stock uh, protection materials, for instance, but they expect that they will be delivered uh, and ordered uh, as needed. Uh, and this, of course, this also uh, leads to the chronic medical personal shortages. This is a chronic problem in Poland for many, many years and observed for many, many years. Um, uh, and there's also a, an issue of underfunding and to a certain extent of uh, economizing, uh, saving money on lower uh, by by uh, by forcing for instance, nurses to work on lower wages, lower wages, and uh, that's why we have chronic problems with uh, with shortages, especially around the work conditions in the uh, European Union. Uh, on that matter, uh, we still have, despite attempts, uh, we still have issues with silo policy making, meaning that uh, some departments are doing their their thing and not looking how this might impact health. So we have a, 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 a urgent, I would, I would say, need to introduce health impact assessment. We have environmental impact assessment, but it's kind of a, kind of a uh, performed in a way that might be uh, symbolic, so can you see. Uh, so still there is a issue with that. Uh, we have a problem that the whole structure of the system is set up kind of in, in the 1990s, uh, it's kind of a setup to create a system of subsidies. That's uh, one of the key issues that is clearly visible in the, uh, in the, in the pandemic. What, what I mean by structural is that uh, the system is arranged in such a way that has to provoke uh, selfish behavior, to provoke competition between uh, healthcare providers and also between, you can see this uh, by the Structure uh, competition between uh, healthcare providers and national health funds. 
meaning that they are being a uh, contract, they are, they are negotiating between each other, which means that to a certain extent they do not want to share most information, which is relevant in this pandemic, especially. And if you want to really assess the needs and, and situation. So, uh, so this setup creates this kind of an incentive to be egoistic, to uh, not to cooperate fully and not to share information and so on and so forth. And this is a challenge, this is a huge challenge uh, on a structural level that, that, uh, that is prevent, preventing the better coordination in the system. That's, that's the main, main issue right now. We, we, we set up our system to be decentralized, to be uh, competitive, to reduce competition, but we kind of forgot about how uh, coordination uh, uh, is relevant. You can see that we are going away from this basic structure and we are mending it. Uh, that's the trend. But still, the, the, the basic setup of the system is still in this. And that's uh, that brief rundown. Uh, I, will, I wanted to give you as much time as necessary for the discussion for the questions. Uh, and uh, to finish it up, I can show you this structure. And if you'd like, I can explain you what's going on there. Uh, and I would be glad to ask any of your questions if needed. Uh, so, there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And now I'd like to open the floor for questions. So, Mr. Harazian, if, if you have some. <clears throat> yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it is very interesting uh, from uh, our side because in Armenia, uh, I, <clears throat> I can say that uh, we started uh, the reforms, the big reforms in the uh, healthcare system uh, the, in the same time. We are also starting from 1999, uh, but uh, uh, in Armenia, we do not uh, have an uh, insurance uh, uh, system uh, up up to date, uh, but you have in, in this case you have uh, uh, a structure of the national health insurance mandatory health insurance and uh, it is very uh, interesting for Armenia because we are going to uh, establish uh, the same uh, system so it will be the publicly funded uh, uh, mandatory health insurance uh, but we are going to solve the problem of the universal health coverage uh, so we are going to uh, cover uh, the whole uh, at, uh, at first uh, the whole population with the main uh, services uh, so uh, it, and um, it will be very uh, interesting uh, i have uh, if you can uh, answer uh, on my uh, couple of, uh, couple of questions. Uh, so the first is uh, about the uh, uh, taxation system. So uh, uh, who who pay and how much uh, uh, how much is the contribution uh, to the national fund? And uh, the second question uh, you show uh, in your uh, presentation uh, and talking about the reimbursement uh, uh, within the system. And uh, I uh, see that uh, there are the, some mechanism of the reimbursement uh, between, uh, yeah, between the payer and uh, stakeholder. So it is, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so cost reimbursement, uh, can you uh, a little bit uh, detailed uh, talk uh, about this? And uh, uh, the structure of the uh, National Insurance Fund. Uh, I uh, understand that it is under the government, uh, where the Ministry of Health uh, uh, is the main uh, manager or councillor or director 
of this fund, or uh, you have the another structure of the management of the national insurance fund. Uh, <clears throat> at first, these questions, and after maybe I will uh, ask you a little bit, uh, talking uh, for the other aspects also. Thank you. Okay, I can, I can answer that, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, to answer your question, let's start, I will start from the, the last question. Uh, and I think this diagram is the best uh, to explain the structure of national yes, yeah. uh, uh, As you can see, uh, can you see the cursor? Or should I see the laser? Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you can see we have a central, central of the national fund, which is the, um, there is a director and the council. Yeah. Uh, they are appointed for several years, basically appointed by the Minister of Health. Interestingly, uh, before 2015, we uh, had a very awkward system in which the prime minister actually appointed the director uh, uh, and proposed by the Minister of Health. But it turned out to be kind of an awkward and, and silly uh, in, a, in a way, and we simplified the system uh, uh, this mechanism. Because the, it showed up in one uh, interesting uh, event in which, uh, at the time, the, the, the government was uh, trying to cover everybody uh, in, the, in the healthcare uh, within the system, uh, despite they not being uh, insured. Uh, or actually, to, uh, we have this issue of you have to always go to the to the, uh, to the, uh, the doctor provider with the proof of insurance. And uh, we optimistically wrote him down in the in the, in the act that will be an electronic card. And only one region uh, managed to create a card. Usually, people have to uh, uh, run around with a paper slip of uh, the payment. I will go back to it, uh, uh, how, how this works in, in a moment. So uh, in, in that, at that time, the, the government introduced the Airbus system, the system of electronic verification. So we didn't have to run around with this. And that meant that um, some, pe when they, some people uh, turned out to be red, that they're supposedly uninsured or unregistered or something, there's a problem. Uh, and the, the directive was that it was to be considered as a glitch and a person is providing the, the kind of a, a uh, paper that says that I, I declare that I am insured and people were insured uh, and people were treated as being insured. Uh, and basically this meant that uh, to, go, to go away with this, uh, with this whole fuss of verifying too much of uh, health insurance because basically speaking, we have to uh, cover these people. With that. What happened is that the current, at the time, the director of the National Health Fund at the time protested she said actually that I think this is a problem because uh, because I don't have enough money to cover these people who are uninsured because I don't have this money from uh, from contribution. So she demanded from the Minister of Health uh, additional funds to cover these people. And what actually happened? She sued the Minister of Health for uh, for 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 this this money, and supposedly she said that this is a, a kind of a for the purpose of uh, it, uh, clarifying the situation. Uh, and that's, that's, that's interesting to me what we can see about this. It's uh, kind of a uh, uh, structural ego showing up here, right? Uh, that says everybody's trying to establish things not by communicating, not by rational deliberation, but by conflict, and the resolution by somebody else. Uh, so what happened is that, uh, of course, Minister of Health uh, immediately uh, uh, asked the uh, Prime Minister to take, take her out of office and propose a new person. A new person uh, appointed, uh, retracted the, 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 uh, the, 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 the court, uh, the, uh, the suit in the court. So there is a council of, uh, and what happened, and this is highly centralized. And uh, the council is also appointed by the uh, Minister of Health. The, I'm, I'm not uh, the, 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 the people who are uh, in the council. The council is supposed to kind of supervise the, the, the actions, the operations of the director. 
they are appointed uh, uh, as certain specialists representing certain stakeholders in the system, primarily within uh, the government structure, uh, kind of a, like proposed uh, by those institutions, and the Ministry of Health is, uh, is actually approving these specialists. And also, we have the regional branches, uh, uh, and there also we have council and directors, regional directors. Um, the regional director is responsible for contacting services, but the council is for the bank. And interesting, over time, over years, we, uh, we made the council as a sort of a, like a consultation institution that takes into account many, many people uh, from many institutions. You see the, 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 the arrow here, it goes to the candidates, and the candidates are being proposed by uh, let's see, it's the whole map. By the Voyager, right? The regional uh, government. Uh, by uh, by police, regional uh, HQ, police, fire department, by military HQ. The regional self government proposes candidates, the, uh, the, the convention of uh, the county proposes there, and also the other stakeholders. Uh, meaning like patient organizations, NGOs, uh, healthcare provider organizations, also delegate candidates. And these candidates are the subject of approval of, uh, by the Minister of Health. So there is an element of uh, feedback and consultation and participation, at least from, from institutionalized stakeholders. Um, but still, they have to be approved were actually appointed by the Minister of Health. Sort of mixed, mix of centralization. And as you can imagine, if something is, if the, if the, if the system is too politicized, you might, you might imagine that some, uh, some uh, like uh, governed by the opposition, local, uh, local the government might be, might feel themselves uh, rejected all the time. Something like that. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, so basically that's the structure. Uh, is there anything else I should add to this? Nothing? Okay. So, uh, going to the issue of uh, contributions for the work. So, you can see here that the, the, the insured are paying uh, insurance contributions. The insurance contributions are, uh, like I said, a payroll tax. So they are taken away uh, from the paycheck and they are being paid, actually paid by the employer usually, unless you are self-employed, there's a different way for that. The contribution uh, takes around, it's, it's uh, stated 9% of the, of the income on that contract for the employment. Uh, uh, I remember that the general idea, the plan in uh, in the reform when it was introduced, the plan was to make the contribution 12%. And they started from 9%, uh, they started from lower percentage, and they started at a level of 9, and nobody had the political will to rise it more. Moreover, we actually realized that this contribution is a, is a cost of labor, which might mean that we make the uh, uh, job market less competitive. So that's a problem. So we don't want that. It actually, German, as I remember, also steered clear from raising uh, healthcare contributions too much and actually added subsidies from other sources, from other taxes. The insurance contributions go through social insurance institutions, the Roots in Polish, but also have a separate uh, insurance institution for, for agricultural workers. It's a, it's a kind of a work of Polish system that we have to respect it. And the problem with this is that health insurance contributions are unfortunately, as for now, extreme, are a tax, but are like very uh, uh, regressive tax, meaning that the, the people who have the lowest income pay the most of their, uh, of their income. And the, the system as it is benefits people self-employed and the rich people. Uh, Self-employed people have this kind of a other system kind of a detached from percentages and and what is actually being a subject of the public debate right now is the government's proposition to fix this, actually make it more uh, like uh, actually
actually actually uh, more uh, redistributional frequency to be eliminated. Uh, it is the uh, uh, regressiveness of the stack. So that's 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 the issue. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think I answered these questions before I go to the cross border care thing. Uh, do we have any further questions? Okay. If no, I have to right now uh, turn off the sharing of screen to show you yeah. another background. Oh, yeah, sorry. About, about reimbursement costs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. But, uh, but you mean reimbursement costs uh, within the cross border healthcare, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is a this is a European Union issue. Uh, so let me show you this. This is based on the. Let me just look up my diagram. I have all these things in diagram. So. I will right now show you this, of course, but but I will of course also send you those diagrams. So do not worry, I will have you covered there. Uh, we have these diagrams prepared, uh, and also uh, you can look at some of these diagrams with a. Uh, reduced for in a reduced form, uh, you can see those diagrams uh, are in the health system in transition. Uh, and share screen, and there you go. Can you see the diagram? Hey, yes. Excellent. So, uh, this is this is all rooted in the European uh, policy and principle of free market, uh, also free market of healthcare, meaning that uh, supposedly uh, you could go take a healthcare to uh, uh, access healthcare anywhere you want, and still be covered by your uh, uh, institution within your own country. But of course, as we realize, that might lead to especially for, for countries like Poland, to a disastrous situation in which. We would be overwhelmed with petitions and requests to refund services. Uh, so there must be some mechanism of cost containment. That's how we introduce this as it is. So there are pretty much two pathways. There's actually a third one, but I'm not going to go into that. It's more specific and for rare, rare diseases. But, uh, but there are two paths. One path is for general uh, uh, services that are within the guaranteed benefit basket. Uh, and the separate procedure, kind of an additional procedure uh, for the uh, for for specific enumerated services, um, which require prior authorization. Basically, in, aside from this, you don't need a prior authorization. Let's start from the uh, uh, without prior authorization. Sorry. So, what you do is you go abroad. Um, get a service from the uh, from the from the uh, from the healthcare provider of your choosing. Uh, you get a receipt. So you have six months to uh, for to apply to the regional branch of National Health Fund, and uh, then the National Health Fund does the investigations, checking things out. Uh, it's all, all good. Uh, uh, usually it's supposed to take uh, one or two months, but interestingly, we have this uh, system set up quite uh, 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 cleverly in, in, uh, to the benefit of the patient that uh, if, uh, if the application is waiting six months, then the, the, after that period, the decision is automatically positive. So, yeah, as you can imagine, that, that might happen in, uh, in the, in, within the bureaucratic mess, as it might happen. I think I'll go back to this issue of bureaucratic mess in a moment. Uh, so 
basically uh, the decision, if the decision is negative, you can appeal to the, to the it's kind of administrative appeal. You can appeal to the, the, the central director, director of national Health fund. If that still is negative, this is still negative, you can go to court. But uh, if this is positive, the, uh, the national health fund within seven days is reimbursing you at the level of, uh, of payment that would be usually paid in Poland. That's very important for one. So, so uh, uh, if you purchase very expensive treatment abroad, you will be re reimbursed only to the level that it is usually reimbursed in Poland, uh, which is kind of a uh, exchange fluctuating between places, but then they, they, they estimate the average and they, they pay you this, this amount. Uh, unless, unless the national, uh, unless there is a reserve, lacked in reserve, because national health fund by statute it is create, has created a, a reserve for this purpose, for the purpose of cross border care. If the reserve is annual reserve, if the uh, reserve is depleted, you simply have to wait for the next year for, the, for your reimbursement. So that's the trade. Um, and basically, that's how it works. There is an additional cost when you would like to go uh, to the treatment of specific. Uh, for specific diseases, um, I don't know if it's in the executive regulation, which require prior authorization. The prior authorization is says you have to firstly go to the national health uh, uh, director uh, to apply, to show all the document, documents, to, uh, to, to apply for this uh, possibility of going abroad and getting better on the investment in to one month. And usually what happens is that uh, this is usually for procedures in which there are long uh, waiting lines. Uh, and this waiting time, this pre-authorization period, is usually used as a way of uh, not only refusing, but actually to find a place in some uh, waiting list some, in some hospital, somewhere in the country, in order to not to, uh, be forced to reimburse. So to keep the patient in Poland, so to speak. So, Basically, the, the appeal procedure is the same, pretty much. Uh, but if uh, afterwards, if you get a prior authorization, you go abroad, you purchase uh, purchase service, you get a receipt, and you repeat the same procedure that I mentioned before. So there's an additional, uh, so you have to uh, a double, uh, a, a double, uh, double one. So there it is. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, are the uh, uh, regulated which kind of case uh, can be reimbursed and uh, which kind of care is uh, uh, or services? Yeah. Uh, the, the anything that is within the guaranteed benefit factor can be reimbursed. Uh, and as I mentioned, there is a separate executive regulation. I don't have it on, 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 on my shelf right now, but it's basically some uh, specialist care that is uh, uh, basically some specialist operations that require prior authorization. But basically anything that is in the guaranteed benefit basket is uh, is subject to cross-border data. And this is all based within the European uh, directive uh, that some period back. So they can uh, reimburse also uh, the uh, services which uh, have to be uh, provided in abroad, yeah? not in. Yes, the... yes, exactly, exactly. Like I said, this is the principle of European Union, free market in European Union, free travel of goods and services. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they uh, have some limitations for reimbursement or. Uh... Yes, uh, they, the limitation is uh, this. That the, our national health fund will only pay the amount that is usually paid in Poland. So if you if Polish person goes to Germany, for instance, it will only get uh, reimbursement. Uh, it, probably they will get a better quality to a certain extent, but they will, uh, will not get the full reimbursement. Oh, there's also one limitation. Uh, you will not get uh, the, the full reimbursement of the pricing in Poland. 
That was a quirk a few years before the uh, that directory was uh, existing, which meant that if you purchased a service in a country that uh, in, in which uh, the service is less expensive, you might profit on it by, by returning. And, the, and this, uh, the, the, there was a period in which uh, your provider, your uh, payer was supposed to pay you the full amount that was usually uh, reserved for this kind of services. And so you could benefit, you could profit, you could have uh, additional money aside from what you pay by going to the country in which the service is cheaper. But that's uh, ended, that's not, all, not, not possible anymore. Uh, of course, it was kind of ridiculous, but that, that's how it, that's why it changed. So you cannot, you cannot do this trick now. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, can you please uh, also a little bit talk about the uh, quality uh, information system oh. and, uh, yeah, and uh, resources, human resources in uh, healthcare? Uh, the, the full list of resources. Okay, so uh, this, uh, the, the, the quality assurance is basically in Poland. Uh, it's basically assured by, uh, first of all, executive regulations, legal acts, parliament acts, uh, executive regulations, including guaranteed benefit factors, uh, which are executive regulations by uh, as, as, uh, as uh, the status of this. And they, they provide certain requirements. These requirements uh, are supposed to be uh, 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 like um, supervised by the National Health Fund. Uh, so within the fulfillment of contract, uh, there's a problem with that um, when it comes to quality, but also other things like uh, uh, proper, uh, more cost-effective management. I mentioned before uh, the, the, the issue of bureaucracy, bureaucracy in Poland. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry for, for this tangent, but it will be relevant when it comes to uh, the issue of quality of um, uh, In Poland, there's an uh, ongoing uh, narrative uh, within the public debate that, uh, uh, that the, the, the bureaucrats and national health fund are eating away all the money from the system, and I, I, I often do the, the from now on, from recently, I, since recently, I'm doing the kind of a, a, a little survey as an amateur, a survey among my students and among my scholars, some, some friends and so on, and asking them uh, how do they think how much uh, the administrative cost, what's the percentage of administrative cost within the annual budget of National Health Fund? And you can imagine, uh, my, uh, uh, in, usually people say things like, oh, well, students, in early students or high schoolers, they might say 30%, 15%, uh, uh, sometimes even 20%. Uh, um, and you can imagine they're surprised when I tell them that it's only 1%. 1% of this, this uh, all of the administrative cost is uh, covered by, uh, is covering the administrative uh, expenses, which is, Ridiculously small, uh, uh, un, uh, unimaginably small. No, no. Uh, it's 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 a it's a miracle that this institution is functioning today. Uh, this that little expenses for, on that type of system. So when you look for a German system, it has because of its decentralization and a lot of coordination that's happened. There's a lot of additional administrative expenses for this type of coordination. You don't have that. That's a huge problem for our quality and proper resource allocation. So uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the issue of quality assurance, so that would be the National Health Fund, which is, which does have uh, not enough uh, money to uh, to execute the, their own uh, quality uh, expectations because they are supposed to make controls of the uh, execution of uh, uh, execution of um, of uh, contracts, but there's, a, there's an issue of lack of uh, manpower resources to do that. Uh, um, uh, so that's, that's one issue. There is a quality assurance center in Poland that is responsible for providing some kind of incentive, incentive for hospitals um, 
hold uh, reach certain quality standards, and these uh, hospitals who reach these quality standards receive uh, like uh, certain certificates, and these certificates provide their bonuses for uh, for better contracting, right? Uh, so additional money for for certain services. So basically, uh, supposedly hospitals would uh, one might expect would like to reach for those uh, certificates, which is not actually it's not what actually happens. Uh, and my guess is that the main problem is that. Um, uh, there is so little money in the system that uh, everybody is actually fighting to scrape by uh, to, to get those contracts uh, to provide services. Because there was a assumption that uh, that uh, um, that these kind of services, these hospitals, are supposed to be uh, self-reliant financially, uh, despite the fact that they, they will obviously don't. Because it is a public service, uh, we give money to it to, to perform those services, and we have obligation to, to have uh, some some uh, some safety. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, so that's primarily the problem with uh, the quality in Poland, which is due to uh, lack of resources and lack of personnel. Uh, a lot of strikes, uh, personal uh, uh, nurses strikes, happen due to the fact of. Uh, too much, too much lean management uh, and uh, attempts at, let's say, uh, uh, contacting uh, exter external services for, for some, uh, some operations, some action by, uh, by nurses and caregivers, even, uh, even hospitals. All of these things uh, combined uh, are challenges in quality of terms. So, on many occasions, there are a lot of in the legal act and legal regulation, but uh, certain problems with the quality of civil service. And this, uh, the quality uh, is established uh, on paper at least uh, by uh, developed by the uh, Agency of uh, Health Technology Assessment. One interesting note, uh, Agency of Health Technology Assessment is also responsible for evaluating health programs, uh, local government health programs. That's interesting. Uh, additional tasks for them to assure the quality, proper quality, and the base uh, quality of these uh, programs. Um, and yeah, that, I, I guess that that is probably the thing uh, um, uh, when it comes to institutions responsible for uh, quality assurance. So that would be, uh, of course, the government, the parliament, uh, as uh, rule setters, and national health fund within contracts. Uh, and execution of contracts, uh, but also uh, like to add the, uh, uh, the state sanitary inspection, uh, which can also uh, look into what's going on in the hospital to see if, if uh, there are some standards for that. Uh, so obviously, that's uh, you know, one of the roles of the institution. Thank you. Uh, and what about uh, human resources? So the medical staff, uh, yes. we have a problem with uh, them because the migration within the European countries it is the yes. issue. For, for the... I will not. I will not provide you with the numbers right now. Uh, uh, I, I can find them. No, I am not uh, just about numbers. Only the general, general, uh, yeah, general. Yeah. yeah. So a general uh, idea is that we have one of the worst. Uh, 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 indicators of the number of doctors per uh, 1,000 inhabitants, and also almost the worst uh, number of uh, nurses uh, per 1,000 inhabitants. Um, uh, this is, I, as I mentioned, I tried to cover some of the reasons for this. Uh, we have uh, uh, some re recent research by our, my colleagues showed, showed that there is an issue of, uh, of course, oh, yes, the doctors in Poland earn uh, more than uh, the average, but they earn significantly less in this proportion from the doctors in other countries. So this means that uh, there is a huge incentive for, for our doctors to uh, immigrate uh, abroad. Uh, and still, there's a still an issue of that, and as we speak about the uh, modification of those 
uh, um, uh, like a correction within the uh, composition system. Uh, also, young doctors, as I can see the discussions right now, uh, they are sharing their dissatisfaction with the idea um, because that will, uh, as the members of the middle class, they will have uh, the ability to think about it. So, uh, the, 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 the moral and political arguments aside, there is a, there is a dissatisfaction with it. Uh, and there's a huge incentive to emigrate abroad. But as, as I said, in, in my view, as I, and as I've seen and observed the functioning of the system over the years, this is a structural issue. Uh, it is being caused by many instances. And for me, is uh, one of the, the core, like background issue might be the the, 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 the high, as I mentioned, the high degree of lean management. Uh, I remember distinctly the report of National uh, Audit Office, very important institution for actually doing that. It's an expert institution that uh, kind of uh, investigates problems in Poland in the, the general public administration system. An uh, excellent source of information uh, about the challenges. But, uh, and as much as I respect the institution, I was flabbergasted when I've seen a report saying that we actually spend too much money on within the system, the national community spend too much money on, 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 on wages for the personnel, uh, which, which uh, while at the same time saying that we spend too little for quality. Uh, and, 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 in, and when you look into the deeper into the system, you clearly see that the, the, one of the mo most important challenges for the quality of our system is the overworked personnel, the personnel that is underpaid and is working in many places. That, would, that became a problem in the pandemic when the doctors themselves were spreading around viruses or nurses because they work in different institutions. Uh, and so-called the, 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 the forcing of doctors to work on uh, on uh, uh, on the uh, we, we call it junk contracts, like short term contracts, uh, uh, pre precarious jobs, basically. Uh, uh, individual, like like a one person company, we call it, uh, single person uh, economic activity. And these, uh, uh, this means that these, uh, these, these people, these people are not, uh, they are in a precarious situation. They, they struggle to, uh, to earn money. Uh, there are, um, and, um, uh, and they are forced to work uh, overtime. And even if you work on the on the on the stable employment, there is a there is so-called uh, and there are uh, quality assurance uh, uh, within the system that says there's a time limit of how much a doctor can work in a day. So you can imagine how uh, 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 um, uh, how how baffling it is that in the Polish law there is a there is so-called opt-out clause where doctors can voluntarily sign a waiver in which they waive all the rights to the limitation of the working hours. Um, uh, uh, recently, uh, one of our students made a, uh, made a uh, uh, poll and made a survey, and it turns out that uh, between 15 to 25 percent of those doctors, especially young doctors, are actually forced to sign these waivers, these opt-out clauses. So if I have a, if I had any advice for them, watch out for this kind of issue. Our uh, our uh, labor market is being uh, this is this is the Polish, uh, the very strong problem in Poland. There's too much uh, this kind of a, uh, a basing of labor uh, market on uh, this this type of contract on this type of uh, an elastic form of employment, which means that uh, it actually leads to the forcing people to work uh, more hours which is uh, obviously will have impact on uh, poorer forms. And the problem is that uh, in, the, in the doctor's community, uh, these doctors want to work sometimes, they want to work more hours because that means that they will earn, earn more and they want to force themselves to work these hours, for instance, to have a greater uh, earnings and, uh, and uh, savings later on in life. But that means uh, they, their quality of life is lower uh, and uh, 
fortunately, there is a movement in Poland to, to fix this, to, to shift this approach, to change this approach. Uh, um, and I hope that uh, there will be a political will to fix this. Um, so there's a lot of issues and, uh, when it comes to quality, because it's very much connected with the problem uh, challenges concerning, uh, concerning the uh, personal shortages and the labor market, basically. So, uh, but when it comes to shortages, there's also other issues. For instance, we have a kind of a gatekeeping system uh, within the uh, uh, job, within, uh, within the system of uh, how much doctors will be uh, allowed to study and how much uh, for the public funds and how much uh, how much new uh, residents, new doctors will be trained. We have the residence system there. And for instance, the residence system is established by the so-called voyage consultant, which is the most prominent uh, uh, people in the, in the community, doctor community. And they actually decide how much doctors will enter the market. So uh, many commentators observe that this is a gatekeeping system which uh, for many, many years limited uh, the, the uh, access to, to, the, to the market, uh, to the profession for doctors in order to keep the prices uh, uh, and, and stay the competition away. So uh, many, many systemic issues, but I just wanted to signal at least uh, things that I might consider um, something that we can do about. There are also many other issues, um, the national situation, the economic situation, Poland, which is actually quite good. But for doctors, interestingly, it's not that good um, when it comes to, when it comes to comparing. Um, so that, that, that is my answer for now. OK, thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, if uh, there are no further questions, uh, I would like to thank you for the presentation and detailed answers to some additional questions. And uh, you will be in touch by email, and uh, I would ask you to send the PDF file of the presentation. And, and also other uh, additional materials. Thank you very much. For thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Goodbye. To you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.